are you all doing i hope you're all doing fine welcome back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for your love for your support oh my goodness i don't take it for granted i just want you to know that but if it's your first time here on my channel hello welcome to my channel please please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe click on that notification bell you will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever i upload a new video i promise you you always enjoy every content that i upload on this channel so dear friends in our today's video we are going to be having a story time of a kenyan ethiopian lady based in South Africa by the name of Natasha who found love on online dating apps in less than a day of joining. <laughs> right now, if you are watching this video and you have been on online dating apps searching, it has been lots of years, but nothing good is coming out. You are like, what? What is wrong with me, Bella? Why is that? I've been on online dating apps for so long and I'm not finding anyone and ladies are joining just in a day they are finding the one <laughs> some of you right now are saying she's so lucky <laughs> and you wish to be Natasha but before you wish to be Natasha before we envy her let's get to know the whole story before she joined that dating app and found love another thing is natasha found love in less than a day with a guy from germany by the name of toddy a very very good guy and financially comfortable <laughs> when i say this i think you understand so i told you we shouldn't envy natasha for finding love in less than a day or be like she's so lucky before we get so deep into her love journey because natasha went through a lot guys if you follow me on instagram there is a short video clip that i posted on my instagram of Natasha of today's story and everyone was like oh my god Bella I'm so sorry about this oh my god Bella I can't wait to watch the whole video some of you are like thank god she's okay now yes guys this lady suffered if suffering had a name then that's Natasha so through her love journey guys you are going to learn a lot and Natasha's story is the unique one, guys. I've never done a story like this. Because through her past relationships, this lady has been dating online dating guys. Yeah. So you is on online dating apps. Today you are going to benefit a lot. Because it is about online dating guys from the start till the end. This will help you shine your eyes. This will inspire you. This will encourage you. It will build your faith in God because at last God wiped all Natasha's tears by bringing a right guy into her life. A guy that loves her crazily. So dear friends, you who is watching this video, you have been online dating up searching, till now you haven't found anyone, you come across losers, trust the process. Everyone has got his or her own journey that God planned for you. So today it might be the first day someone watching me and joins online dating apps, she finds love. But also maybe you have been on online dating apps, it has been four years and nothing. Maybe your fourth year is your time. Maybe your fifth year is your time. Maybe you'll stay only two years and find love. So let's not be discouraged by these success stories we hear someone finding love in a short period of time and you'll be like i am unlucky my village people are after me <laughs> they don't want me to get married no it's not like that please please believe in yourself and wait for god's time and guys before i forget natasha is my own baby i'm so happy very excited guys to bring this story to you 
because when you guys watch my videos you follow my advice my guidance and eventually you succeed ah. <laughs> I'm full of joy guys <laughs> so without wasting much of your time because this video is gonna be a long one let me welcome our beautiful Natasha to tell us her love story though I will be coming in between to give you some tips and tricks welcome dear Natasha hi guys my name is Natasha and I'm a Kenyan Ethiopian lady based here in South Africa and I'm here to share with you guys my online successful story and I hope that it will encourage, motivate and inspire you ladies out there that are still searching for love, be it online or in real life. My story is going to encourage you and I hope that you can learn from my, the mistakes that I made in my past love life and you can pick it from there and learn from my mistakes and first off i want to start with my background history and my past love experience so i am a kenyan ethiopian lady based here in south africa but i come from a family of 10 members and all my life i have lived in kenya and my life life starts back in 2012 when i met this Kenyan guy who was based in South Africa. We met on Facebook. I joined Facebook for the first time and that's where I met this guy and he sent me a friend request which I accepted and after I accepted the friend request we started talking and he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes. So we started talking and after some few months he came down to Kenya to visit me and when he came I introduced him to my family and he also introduced me to his family and after some time he had to go back to Kenya to South Africa. So after he went we continued talking and after some time trouble started because there were so many ladies who kept on sending me friend requests on Facebook and the ladies knew the guy they were also we were mutual friends so they knew the guy and they started sending me messages warning me against the guy telling me that the guy is still dating them and that I should stop seeing this guy but when I confronted this Kenyan guy he told me these are all just jealousy women who are out there wanting to break our relationship so I ignored it and I trusted his words because I thought these were just ladies who wanted to just mess up my relationship with him but this thing kept going on for long so I kept on ignoring these ladies but they kept on sending me messages and messages telling me that I should stop seeing this guy because he's not a nice guy that he had broken their hearts and he's still seeing some of them so I didn't listen to them because I really loved this guy and I was very young by that time I didn't know what love was so I kept on listening to him and ignored all these girls so when some months went by in 2012 the guy came to Kenya for the first time and we met but when I asked him if I should pick him from the airport he told me no that he will come by himself to where I was and this time I was staying by my sister's place so he came and after he came he had booked for a hotel we went and stayed for two days in a hotel and after staying there trying to know each other I took him to my family introduced him to my family and after me introducing him to my family he also took me to his family and I met his family but not all of his family, just part of his family because he's an orphan. He doesn't have a mom and a dad. 
so he introduced me to his aunties and his his family like close family members so and that was from the dad's side but i never met anyone from the mom's side because he didn't take me to the mom's side so after some time after some days of us visiting his family and visiting my family he told me that i should look for a house that he will pay for me because he wants us to start our life together so i told my elder sister about this and he said it's okay if the guy is going to pay for the house and all the expenses then it's fine i can go and look for a house so i went together with the guy we looked for a a house and we got a flat and he paid for it and time came he had to go back to south africa so after he went to south africa we kept on talking and chatting all the time but sometimes the guy could disappear for some days i couldn't see him for some days we couldn't talk for some days but i was young and this guy was supporting me in all ways and i didn't even think of anything bad about him so we kept on with our i kept on with our relationship and he could disappear for some time yes some days we couldn't chat sometimes he would come back we chat so after some time this guy started changing and i could see some problems coming ahead and i loved him a lot i didn't even tell my sisters what was happening cuz the guy kept on disappearing and in 2013 he came down to Kenya again to visit me but i could say they there were so many red flags that i ignored cuz when the guy was coming down to Kenya to see me he could disappear for some days yeah he could disappear for some days maybe he told me he boarded the flight today he's supposed to reach me tomorrow where i am he could disappear for even a week i couldn't even get hold of him so after disappearing for a week the next minute i could see him on the doors knocking that he's home so after some time my sister i told my sister about this incident where this guy keeps on disappearing when he's coming back home to see me he could disappear in Ethiopia for maybe a week so my sister told me i should be careful cause this seems like it's trouble coming ahead but i ignored and told him i don't know maybe it was the network or something that's why i couldn't get hold of him but my sister warned me and told me to be careful but again i was young and whatever my elder sister was telling me i kept on ignoring it because i was young stupid and in love so the guy could come and we could continue with our relationship he could tell me that i'm the only one he loves and that i should not listen to anyone talking negatively about us so when 2013 was ending the guy came again and visited me but this time there was a woman who was calling me from south africa and she told me that the guy is her husband and i should stop seeing this guy but i ignored the lady and i kept on with our relationship so after ignoring this lady so 2013 after christmas the guy, the guy went back to south africa and after he went back to south africa we kept on talking and after some time they had lost a baby this south african woman called me and she told me that i should stop seeing this guy that the guy is her husband and now they have lost a baby i should 
let the guy be because now they want to mourn their baby who had passed away. So I called the guy and asked him why he didn't tell me about the baby that he had with this woman and why he never told me that he's a married man because I don't want to date a married man. And he got so angry and told me that I should forget about him and that he's not going to pay for anything for me, that he's not going to pay even for the house rent and he can't support me anymore. So me, I thought it was a joke and kept on living in that house. But when time to pay my next rent came, my landlord came and knocked for me at the door asking me why I had delayed to pay the house rent. And I told him I will call this guy in South Africa because he's the one who was paying for the house. So I told my landlord to give me some time to talk to the guy and tell him that rent needs to be paid. So I called the guy, but when I was calling him, I couldn't get hold of him. I tried and tried, but I couldn't get hold of him. So. I kept on trying and after some time I got hold of him and after I got hold of him I told him that rent needs to be paid and he disconnected the phone he cut the phone on me and when I kept on calling 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 wanting to tell him more about the house and why he had disconnected the phone on me he kept on disconnecting when I was calling he was disconnecting so at last he i called and he told me that he's not going to pay for the rent that i should sort myself out that he's no longer interested in me that he's not gonna support me in any way so i remember crying a lot in that time i was all by myself i didn't even share with my sister to tell her what was happening so I went to my landlord and told my landlord what was happening and I requested my landlord to give me time to use the deposit that was paid the one month deposit that was paid so that my one month deposit that the guy had paid I asked my landlord to allow me sit for that deposit and Fortunately, my landlord understood my problem and he allowed me sit for that one month. So after I sat for that one month, before the month ended, I started selling stuff and I told my sister that I want to come back to her place because I had nowhere to go. This time I had no job to even support myself. So my sister told me it's fine, I can go back to her after I finish selling the stuff. So after I finished selling the stuff, I went back to my sister's place and this time I started taking care of my nieces because my sister had kids. So I started living with my sister and taking care of her kids as I was sorting myself out, knowing what I'm going to do. But now, this 2014, 20, 20, 2014 my dad was diagnosed with cancer and now he had to come down to Nairobi for treatment and my uncle my younger my younger dad's brother invited my my mom and my dad to stay by her by his place as my dad continued with his treatment so my dad could stay there as he went for his treatment with in support of my mom and as I was staying by my sister's place, I could take care of my sister's little kids and later on go see my dad by my uncle's place. So that was my daily routine because my dad was my best friend and now my best friend was so sick and I had to also be there for, for my dad. Yes, because he was my best friend always there for me and my sisters. So that 2014, when it was continuing, my dad still was going through his chemotherapy and my, my dad kept on warning against this guy because the guy 
my dad knew what happened that the guy told me that he won't support me and now I have even vacated the house because of of him refusing to support me so my dad told me to stop seeing this guy and continue with my life cuz the guy isn't interested is me with me and as he had said that I should move on he won't support me my dad told me I should listen and follow to what he has said so we continued like that but the guy, the guy wasn't calling me or texting me so i left it like that but sometimes i could call and call and call but he could ignore me and he could even disconnect the calls on me when i was calling him because i was so desperate to be in a relationship with him and i still wanted him back even after he told me that he won't support me and even after hearing that he had a wife and a kid that they had lost in south africa still i was wanting the guy cuz that time i didn't know what love was and i was so in love with him and i kept on bothering him with my calls but he kept on disconnecting my calls so 2014 came and my dad before my dad died in 2014 november i remember him being in his sick bed and he was crying so much for me because of what i was going through with this broken relationship because this broken relationship had broken me a lot so my dad called me on his sick bed and he told me that i should stop seeing this guy and that i should move on with his li- with my life and i should not go back to being in a relationship with this guy and i remember i promised my dad that i will never go back to this guy and my dad was so happy because he had these words from my mouth me promising him that i won't ever go back to this broken relationship even if the guy came back so 2014 november my dad died i lost my dad and this broke me so much this broke me so much cuz it was so unexpected i thought that my dad will be okay and come back into our lives cuz he was the best dad ever he took care of us took care of my mom and all the years of us growing we knew my dad was a good dad cuz he took care of us and he was there for us cuz we were only girls and he was a father figure for me and my sisters now he's gone my friend is gone i didn't know what to do i was so broken but i lost so much weight because i was dealing with a broken relationship and now my dad is gone i lost so much weight but i had to move on cuz it's life so 2014 my dad died and we buried him and i remember so after we buried my dad 2015 came and we had to move on with life but it was not so easy cuz my mom was so stressed cuz the husband is gone we are here so stressed and 2015 mid 2015 this guy came back and he started talking to me and i told him we have lost our dad and he was so shocked very shocked and he asked me why didn't i let him know that my dad is gone and i told him i used to call him but he wasn't talking to me he kept on disconnecting my calls that's why i never told him so he sympathized with me and i remember he sent some money for me to give to my mom just for him saying sorry that we had gone through my dad's loss so he sent some money and after sending some money i gave the money to my mom and told my mom that this guy had sent money to say sorry for us losing our dad so my mom i remember he said it's okay he has she has received the money but my mom wasn't happy 
he my mom thought that now I will go back to the guy and remember I had promised my dad that I won't go back to this relationship. So my mom started getting stressed and my mom was worried that this guy will heartbreak me again if I go back to him. Yes, and I remember after some time, some days, after some days of him sending money to my mom, he started telling me that he wants us to get back together and continue with our relationship. And I said yes, because remember I was so young, so naive, I didn't know what love is, and I really wanted this guy because I loved him so much. So I gave him a chance and we started dating again. But remember before, while we were dating before, he, he refused to support me. There were red flags of him always fighting with me. We used to fight so much. So dear friends, let's take a bit of a pause and talk about what Natasha went through with that Kenyan guy. This lady suffered a lot. So if you are out there searching for love and maybe you come across a guy, he loves you so much, he is financially stable and then he wants you to depend on him 100% that's a red flag because most guys especially the toxic ones will want you to depend on them a hundred percent so that they can manipulate you so that they can do everything they want to do on you they can give you orders because at the end of the day you a hundred percent depend on them financially so that you can survive so for you not to find yourself in the same situation that Natasha found herself in is to always depend on yourself. No matter how the situation is difficult, maybe on your financial side, always look for ways to improve yourself. If it is to search for a job, keep searching for a job. If it is to do just a small business, do that small business. Slowly by slowly, that small business will grow and eventually you will be financially free. But depending on a guy 100%, that's a no. You guys at phone love, let's take an example on online dating apps and maybe this guy tells you, I want to rent an apartment for you and the apartment he is telling you, it is a very expensive apartment whereby you know yourself financially alone, you can't afford to pay for that rent. If that guy is to disappear at one day, you can't afford. So my advice here will be, do not take that apartment. Rent a very small apartment that you can afford even without that guy. Yes, guys, because Natasha told us at that time she didn't have any job. So what was the best thing for her to do? To remain at her sister's place while searching for other jobs. <laughs> Not to accept this guy's offer whereby she knows she has zero balance in her bank account. But again, she tells us was really young and naive. So we cannot judge her, but let's learn from her mistakes. And every time we could fight, he could call my mom and dad, trying to poison my mom and dad, poisoning my dad's, my mom and dad's mind trying to convince them that I was a bad woman. So after some time, my family started seeing me that I was a bad woman because this guy could send money to my family to support my family. And so the guy could act so good when he's with my family or calling my family, but we could fight a lot. We could fight so much and he, all the time he could poison my family's fam my family's brain trying to convince them that I was a bad woman and my f family started saying that I'm a bad woman I'm a bad woman and they started wondering how come that I was this good girl now I have turned into a bad girl yet they didn't know it was the guy who was giving me problems but after some time, my mom came to realize that this guy was the bad one and my mom stopped picking 
his calls cause all the time he could pressure my mom and give my mom so much pressure trying to say negative things about me so this time my mom got so tired and he started ignoring him but this time remember i went back into this relationship even after my dad said i should not go back i still went to it and now my mom didn't want to talk to this guy anymore cuz the guy kept on giving my mom heart attack with negative things which were not true so later on we continued and in 2015 september i remember i had found a job in south africa and this guy was still not supporting me yes he could send money to my mom just to make convince my mom that he's a good person but he wasn't a good person so he stopped supporting me he couldn't send me more money or anything like that so 2015 came and i got another job 2015 september came and i got another job in south africa and this time i told him I got a job in South Africa but I don't know how I will go to South Africa because I didn't have money. So he said it's fine. He will support me and when I'm in South Africa I could stay with him cuz I didn't have a place to stay. As much as I had found a job, this job wanted me to get my flight ticket by myself and also find accommodation by myself. So the guy said that he will invite me to his place and we can stay there as i work so 2015 came and i moved to south africa so after moving to south africa this time i started staying with the guy but when i reached there the guy didn't have a place like to he had no place like to call home home he only had this room with just a bed and that bed he had even bought it a day before i arrived in south africa that's when he had bought a bed because he was living with his friend and there was nothing else in that house apart from the kitchen utensils only so when i reached there i asked him how was he living like that cause there was nothing there so he told me it's fine he'll buy everything and yes he bought everything in the house and we started our life but this time he was going to another city while i was staying in this other city in his house with his friend he was going to another city telling me that he's working so he would disappear for a week so to me it was fine cause I kept on with my job but after some time this guy told me I should leave the job so that was in 2016 beginning he told me to stop with the job which I stopped cause the job wasn't well paying and what this company had offered for me wasn't what I was coming for and now this company also didn't renew my 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 work permit after my work permit ended they also didn't want to renew it so i had to also stop with the job so i started staying in the house i had nothing to do and by this time this guy had found another business that he was doing so he stopped working in that other city for this other insurance job and he came down to the city where i was and now he was doing business and the business was well paying and now i was happy cuz i knew that he's gonna support me cuz it was hard for me getting another job as a foreigner so we started we continued living that was in 2016 but now this time after the guy started this business and he got money he started touching big money i remember he one day started abusing me we were on the streets and in front of people the guy slapped me cuz as usual the ladies kept on sending me messages on facebook and when i could confront him he could physically abuse me 
so even in front of people on the streets the guy could abuse me and i remember i could cry on the streets but no one would so the people in the street could just look at us as we are fighting and as i'm crying and as this guy is abusing me physically and no one could help me so this continued and in 2016 mid my elder sister had to come down to south africa cuz she had also found a job and this guy said my sister can come and stay with us but this time we had moved to another bigger better house cuz that would accommodate the three of us so my sister came down to south africa and this time she was working but as she was working still the guy kept on physically abusing me and this time he had also turned it on my sister too he could even beat up my sister and me and i remember he could even ask us to leave him he could ask us to leave him and tell him that we should go that he wants to bring someone else he want to bring another woman in the house yeah and it continued like that and he started cheating on me because we could find a lot of things that he had done with women even in the parking lot where we used to park the car he we could find a lot of things that he had done with women but i kept on holding on to this relationship thinking that it will work but i was wrong cuz the guy kept on cheating on me another thing guys that you need to know especially you who are still searching about a toxic guy a violent guy it's not that all of a sudden he will start beating you up i told you one day that when they first start the relationship of course he is going to appear very sweet very understanding very loving but as days keeps on going when you start saying no you will see this guy changing on you and they will start by verbally abusing you then you will ignore <laughs> after ignoring that it will go to physical and when he beats you for the first time he will convince you that he will never do it but don't believe it if a guy raises his hands once on you that's the end of the relationship cuz if you tolerate and be like he will never do it be rest assured that he will do it again and again and again another sign of a toxic guy i've talked about this is when the guy you are dating wants to appear that he is so much in love with you he treats you good he will do very very good things in front of your loved ones your parents your friends people close to you things that in the closed doors he never do that when you sense that run my sister <laughs> before it's too late cuz that's how it all starts because now he had found another woman in Kenya and the woman was pregnant we found out this and the woman started calling me and telling me she's pregnant for this guy and again here in South Africa the guy had this the woman who kept on calling me that the other time before I came to South Africa when they had lost a baby this woman now had a new baby that I didn't know but I came to realize later on cuz the woman I got the woman's number and I called this woman cuz all the time the guy could talk to this woman even in front of me so I got her number and I texted her and after I texted her the woman told me they had a baby and the guy used to come to the city the, uh, the other city leaving me in this other city to see them and that he was paying for them and supporting them so i confronted the guy but he was physical on me so life went on like that cuz i was trying to save my relationship but remember i was never married to this guy legally we just met and started living together so that's why he was abusing me like he kept on abusing me cuz he had nothing to lose cuz we were not legally married so we kept it on like that but the guy could go to the other city 
to see the other lady and he could lie to me that he went to the other city to see some friends or do business but later on when I'm unpacking his luggage I could come up with some flight tickets showing that he's coming from another city yet he said he went to another city so I kept it like that and continued with this relationship because I don't believe in broken relationships so I was holding on to it being the good woman because me being brought up I have never experienced violence with my parents never ever and I have never experienced a toxic guy or a toxic dad no because my dad wasn't toxic so this all started because this guy had nothing to lose because we were never legally married so we kept on like that but this time i was getting depression i went through depression and i almost lost my life because i remember seeing my doctor and he told me i'm about to die because i went through depression and i also had migraines all the time I lost so much weight because I never used to eat because I was so stressed. I wasn't in a happy place because of this guy cheating on me and all the physical abuse. So this time my doctor had to put me on antidepressants because I had depression. So the violence went on and I remember one day he kicked me off the staircase and I was bleeding and he was hitting me so hard because of this Kenyan woman. The Kenyan woman kept on telling the guy that I had talked negatively about her, which wasn't true. And also this other South African woman kept on saying negative things to the guy, filling him with negative things so that I can leave the guy for, hey, for her. So later on, I told these two women it's fine, they can continue with the guy because now I'm so depressed and I can't take it anymore. They can have him for themselves because they have a baby, they, or rather they have babies with them. But as time went by, I realized so the guy had more babies with other baby mamas. So I remember I was so depressed and my sister was also depressed for me because I lost so much weight and but I was still holding on to this relationship because I wanted it to work so badly but it wasn't working because the guy was only cheating on me and I remember one day he sat me down me and my sister he sat us down and he told us that we should leave him and that he wanna bring some other woman to his house and he asked us when are we leaving him so that he can bring this other woman and he told me that if I think I'm with a man who wants to be with a one woman or if I think I'm with a man who wants just one woman all his life then I'm in the wrong place I should just go and I asked him why is he saying that he told me yes he means it if I think I'm with a man who wants a, who will stay with one woman then I'm in the wrong place I should just leave him and go because he told me he's from a polygamous family and he was brought up in a polygamous family and he believes in having many women so if I want I can't I can't stay in a polygamous relationship I should just go and I remember this other Kenyan woman really wanted us to be co-wives because he used she used to call me a co-wife but I wasn't anyone's co-wife because I wasn't this guy's wife I wasn't married to this guy so she kept on saying that we can be two women for this guy but little did she know there were other women here in South Africa that the guy was also seeing and that he had babies with. So this Kenyan lady kept on saying that she's happy that we can be 
two women for one man. And I told her I'm not ready if she is ready to be in a polygamous family or relationship, then that won't work for me. And I have left that for, for her. She can continue with this guy because for me, I can't continue with a polygamous relationship. So I remember 2017 came, I was still on antidepressant, still using the depression medicine and so lost so much weight and so depressed and stressed. But the guy never cared because he could go out, stress me out and go out and buy for me this depression medicine for me to continue taking as his be as he was busy stressing me he could still go out and buy these depression medicines and bring them back to me for me to continue taking so i continued with my medication because i couldn't do without the medication so this continued on like that the violence on me and my sister continued like that and Finally, in 2017 ending, I told him I'm done with this relationship that I want to go away. So the guy got so angry that I'm leaving him because he wanted me to still continue being in a relationship where he was cheating on me and being violent on me and also my sister. So I told him, no, I can't continue with this relationship. I want to go. So he got so angry and I remember he told me and my sister to pack our things that he's going to send us away, that he's not gonna want us to continue staying in South Africa. So he made sure that he kicked us out of South Africa. We packed our things and some of it we left because it was too much for us. So he took us to the airport, escorted us with his friends who were policemen and made sure that we left South Africa. So we left South Africa and when we reached in Kenya, I remember I was done done with him, but he kept on sending me WhatsApp messages telling me that I should come back home and continue a relationship with him. But I said, no, I can't go back to him. I want to move on with my life. So he continued being angry with me even when I was far. He could abuse me verbally, but I didn't care because now I was away from him. So we stayed in Kenya, 2019 began, and that's when me and my sister came back to South Africa. But now on our own, without him knowing, me and my sister came back to South Africa and we started our life in another city without him so he didn't realize but he kept on sending messages thinking that I was in Kenya so 2019 when me and my sister started our new life in another city we continued we searched for jobs and we got jobs and we continued with our lives without this guy but after some time, he came to realize that I was back in South Africa and he started saying that we should meet, that he wants me to go back to him and that he wants me to go back to him, that he wants us to continue with this relationship. But I told him, no, it's over, that I'm moving on with my life. He should also do the same because he told us to go away. So we left him as he wanted but he kept on insisting because he was a jealous guy and he just wanted to come back and mess life for us because now he knew we didn't depend on him totally. So he was trying to come here and to come and try to make life a living hell for us because he wanted us to always be begging him for money and everything. But I told him, no, this won't work. He should move on with his life. But he got so angry and verbally continued abusing me. But I didn't care because now I wasn't in his arms or I wasn't going back to him. So guys, it really breaks my heart to hear what this lady went through in the name of love. 
if you are out there searching for love please please never accept a guy to be violent on you never accept a guy to beat you and then the next day he buys you gifts and tells you i love you because if that guy really means it that he loves you then he's not supposed to beat you up if you love someone truly you can't support seeing them cry you can't support seeing them hurt so this guy beating you up this guy hurting you this guy becoming violent on you even verbally that's not love it's not love at all at all find a way to stop that relationship because there is a way most people go through a lot of violence in their relationships but when you talk to them you hear them telling you no you know what i have no way i just need to keep on you know tolerating everything because what can i do where can i go how will i start my answer here is there is a way you can't keep on supporting violence from that guy that you think loves you cause one day things might get out of hands and maybe you lose your life even if not to lose your life someone can even make you a cripple yeah so guys please take this seriously i've seen most of you like deeming me telling me all the stories but at the end of the day i don't see any concrete plan of you moving out of that toxic relationship you need to make a plan because you can just trust in yourself don't be like this is my life i have to just give up and accept everything do not think it's normal for a guy to be beating you up for a guy to be insulting you for a guy to be disrespecting you no it's not normal and you deserve the best Trust that one day you will find someone that will love you truly. But how will you find that someone if you still keep on tolerating the violence from that guy? That will never happen. So take actions. Please, please. I am encouraging you to take actions. So 2019 came and we continued with our life, me and my sister and this time we could go to work and come back home but when we were home i could get so bored and so depressed now because i loved the guy and he now had broken me so much with his cheating behaviors and how he said he doesn't want me anymore so now i got so stressed and i started feeling so lonely and I remember after work I could just come back home and watch YouTube videos all the time. That was in 2019. I could watch YouTube videos, listen to something on YouTube and I started coming across some interracial couples on YouTube and most of the time these interracial couples could say they met their partners on dating sites so i started getting interested in dating sites and also i started getting interested in interracial relationships so i thought to myself this time that my relationship with a black man didn't work now i'm ready to start a new life a new relationship but this time I won't go for an African man. This time I will go for a white man because I was done with black men and I was done done with black men. I couldn't even think myself going back to a black man again. So 2019 went by, 2020 came, I was still trying 2021 I kept on trying the oh, dating apps yeah because these interracial couples had inspired me a lot and I was so interested in an interracial relationship so I had tried several dating apps I tried um, dating apps like Afro introductions Bumble South African dating interracial is it inter international cupid 
then I also tried okay Cupid. Yes, I tried several dating online dating apps, but nothing was coming out successful because I could meet a lot of challenges. Like sometimes you would meet someone who you start connecting and you exchange numbers, but the person next day just decides to block you. Or some tell you maybe you are so ugly that they don't want you. Some of them tell you they just want to meet you for fun. Some of them just want you to send them money. And I wasn't paying for these dating sites. I never paid for a dating site, not even a coin. It was for free. And... I continued like that and in 2021 I joined South African Dating and I came across this Moroccan guy. He was from Morocco but he was based here in South Africa. So when I met this Moroccan guy, we were supposed to meet after exchanging the phone numbers. We started talking on WhatsApp and he asked me to meet him by his place. So I met him by his place, but when I went there, he told me that he doesn't ever want to see my family. That is my sister, because I told him I have a sister. And when before I went even to this guy's house, I remember I took a notebook and a pen, and I wrote the address of this guy on my notebook. In my notebook, I wrote the address, the name, the cell phone number, and where he was living, like his house number, and I gave it to my sister. And I told my sister, just in case of anything, because I'm meeting this guy for the first time, then in, if anything happens, this is his address. My sister can find me there, just in case anything goes wrong with me. But I was so excited. I was so excited because now finally my dating, my online dating life had begun and the way I was wanting and, and I was interested in a white man, it was coming true so I was so excited but now again I remember before leaving after I left my sister with this guy's address I went to this guy and when I reached there this guy told me that he doesn't ever want to see my sister or my family there by his place, that this relationship is just for me and him, that he doesn't ever want to see my sister there. So I kept it true to myself and I didn't tell him that I had given out his address and contacts back to my sister just in case anything happens. So when I reached there, we started, I stayed there for some weeks. But when I started, I, I stayed there the first week, this guy started asking me for money and telling me that he loves me a lot and he wants to marry me. So he took me out shopping and I remember he bought me a ring telling me that he wants to marry me so he was a Muslim and he told me that he wants me to convert and become a Muslim and he bought me a ring telling me that he's gonna marry me and I told him it's okay because I loved him but we didn't get married because he started saying that he wants money he, he has a woman back in Morocco that the family chose for him and that he wants to bring this woman here in South Africa for us to be two wives after he marries me. So I told him it, it, it won't work because I won't want to be a second wife because he said that this woman was going to be the first wife and I will be the second wife. So I refused and this guy started hitting me he could go physically on me just forcing me to to allow be the second woman for him and 
he also was beating me saying that I should give him money that we should bring this woman chosen for him down here in South Africa so that we can start our life as three people, two wives after he marries the both of us and him. But I kept on saying no, 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 but he kept on beating me saying that. I remember he could force me to become a second wife and I kept on insisting no, 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 I can't be a second wife. And he was so violent on me physically, he could abuse me and I could cry because sometimes he could step on me with, with a big boot. Yeah, he could wear a big boot and step on me on the floor, on a wet floor. He could pour water, cold water on the floor and he could tear all my clothes and leave me naked on the floor and he could step on me and when I'm about to lose my breath, I could scream and tell him it's okay, I will go to the bank and withdraw money for him so that he can marry the two of us. When time comes for him to marry us, he can marry the both of us. But that marriage never happened. He never married me and he never succeeded with his plans of wanting me to go withdraw money for him from the bank because I remember one day he beat me up and my eye was so black and swollen and I decided to tease him and tell him that it's okay the next day we can go to the bank and withdraw money so that he can marry the two of us. But little did he know that I had planned on escaping. So he used to close the door on me and watch me so that I won't disappear. I won't escape because this guy had no money. He had no job. He was only doing this to women. I came to realize that after the neighbors rescued me, the neighbors rescued me when the guy had gone out. I told him to go out and buy some food for us. And he forgot the key on the door and that's how I escaped. And the neighbors helped me and told me that's what the guy did to all the ladies who came there by his place. So the relationship ended that 2021. So guys, I remember there is a time I did a video about countries to be careful about. Like if you are on online dating apps, you should be very careful with guys from those countries. And I talked about Arabic countries, especially if we were born and raised as a Christian or in a country that is a Christian country or the majority of the population are Christians and then you find a guy on online dating apps is from an Arabic country and maybe he is a Muslim. I'm not saying that all these guys are bad. No, that's not my point. But the problem comes in with their strict culture and traditions. So you find that in their culture, it is so difficult to bring a stranger in and you marry her. <laughs> so no matter how good you are, no matter how you are a wife material, that guy will never marry you. Or if he marries you, then he's going to keep you away from his family, <laughs> meaning he will have another wife, whereby that wife is the choice of his family so if you are a lady you were born and raised in christianity we don't support polygamy that is going to be really hard for you that is why i told you be very very careful before you go in and start dating a guy from those countries get to understand well their culture and traditions not only straight from him the information you get from him because he can lie to you you know <laughs> to his own advantage no go ahead and search for information the information is out there so i really feel so sorry for natasha to fall in love with this guy from morocco because if i was in her shoes i wouldn't have even given him a chance at all at all to me 
no chance i'm so sorry and this is due to what i have told you already note that i've got some personal problems from guys from morocco not at all these people always marry among themselves <laughs> <laughs> either you are from morocco or you are from the culture and traditions that is similar to his country and in 2022 i was single and i didn't want anything to do with men but again i was so lonely and all my age men mates were getting married and i was like I also need to have a home of my own. So 2022 came and I was alone. I wasn't seeing anyone. Then continued listening to YouTube videos on interracial couples. And I also continued trying some online dating sites. So dear friends, because this video is really long, today let us end here, but I promise you, after a day or two, I will bring part two, so that we can finish this beautiful online dating success love story. And in part two, oh my god, it's gonna be more juicy. <laughs> Thank you so much guys for watching this video, I really appreciate much. For your love and your support if you have liked this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super super good you are going to learn a lot comment below what you think about this video until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao Mwah.